Aloha. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, episode 88. Was holding and, um, you know, hoping. And um, there's one trade that really, really um, I was just being stubborn about. Like, it has to go down. It has to go down. It, that kind of um, that kind of blew up a big portion of my portfolio. And This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host, whose adventures include staring a lion down face to face. Wait, really? Play Trader. Yeah, believe it or not, I have stared down a lion face to face. But the caveat here is it was stuffed. So it was a stuffed lion. But cool story here. And I mean, I live in West Michigan. So hunting is a, a pretty big thing. I live kind of out in the country. Uh, some of my brother-in-laws are, are big hunters and stuff like that. So I mean, I've, I've always known about hunting, but I didn't. I never realized how much of a hobby, passion it could be in terms of dollars and cents. And uh, there's a there's a friend that we have, and his uh, dad owns an insurance company, and he took us to their kind of I guess like showroom at the insurance company office where his dad like has all these different stuffed animals and not, not stuffed animals in terms of like toy stuffed animals, but like, uh, real animals that has, been, that he shot and then had them, uh, stuffed. So like taxidermy and one of them was a lion. And so it was cool to walk up there and like be face to face with it. And this is like a legitimate lion from Africa. And we got talking more and more and come to find out just for their permit, so like for us here in the United States, if you want to go shoot deer or something, you just have to go to get a, a permit from your state, which I don't know, is like, what, like a hundred bucks or something like that, 150 bucks just for the permit. So this does not have anything to do with shipping the lion back, getting it stuffed, nothing like that. Just for the permit for it to go and hunt a lion in Africa, $60,000. So when I heard that, I was just. I need to get in the insurance business. Was the I first was just going to say the insurance <laughs> business is where we should uh, be changing yeah, the website. Yeah. Right away. <laughs> but uh, so, man, I mean, I don't have anything against hunting. I, I we're not trying to turn into this political. All. I'm just saying, I don't know if I could ever get in hunting that much for paying sixty thousand dollars for a piece of paper. But hey, th that is clearly that guy's passion, that guy's hobby. So good for him. Uh, but. Yeah, pretty crazy. But yes, I have stared down a line face to face and it was there is no glass between us like at a zoo or something, but it just happened to not be any longer living. But uh, that's pretty crazy. And Chaz, who already chimed in, which, which was fantastic because we're on the same wavelength. We're now pivoting to uh, an insurance company, apparently. But uh, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, $60,000. That's that's wild. Yeah, that's, you know, especially just looking at it from a monetary standpoint. But uh, Kelly's family, actually, a lot of them are also into hunting. But as you said, you know, it's not even just that it's the money. Of course, you know, $60,000 to just get the permit is ob obviously huge. You know, as some people, more than some people's salary for an entire year. Um, but there's also like a big time investment. I mean, you might be getting out there, you know, you're definitely getting out there at sunrise or before. And then you might literally sit there and there might be days where you see maybe one thing you shoot, you miss, and then that's gone. So 18 hours later, you come home empty handed. But at the same time, like you said, you know, a hobby and passion is it's not those are things that you're not going to say like, oh, what a what a wasted day or something. You know, you enjoy going out there, being quiet and kind of stalking your prey, stuff like that. So um, but yeah, that's sixty thousand dollars on the line. But it's pretty cool. that You were able to kind of be face to face with it. That's pretty wild. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the showroom had like elephant feet in it that you could use as seats. I never realized elephants were that big, but, uh, yeah, he's, he shot some pretty exotic animals. So speaking of exotic, we're gonna, we're gonna go on a little tropical vacation this episode, and we're going to head out into the Pacific to talk to this member. Um, and we're going to talk with Tony from Hawaii and come to find out Tony is like super new to the group. He's super new to clay trading university. Um, and I, I, I just didn't realize it just because he's kind of in study mode right now. So hasn't really been talking that much in the chat room. Uh, but, uh, he's a younger guy. Uh, he, he's a kind of ambitious. He's a little ambitious, uh, but he's, uh, got a lot of good stories. You know, he, he got, I'll just leave it at that, but he's gone through some pain here. Um, and he's, uh, an open book shares it all with us. And, uh, it was a, a great interview. So I'm, I'm confident that, uh, you know, you're going to have a good time with it. And, uh, he's definitely a puppet master. 
if you've been wanting, you know, to hear to hear me and Chez rant a little bit, especially me, he pulled my puppet strings and had me ranting and ranting in this episode. So definitely stick around for that if you're a fan of that. If not, this is probably not the episode for you. But without further ado, let's talk to uh, let's start our tropical vacation. Tony, aloha, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, aloha. So you're you're literally in Hawaii right now, right? Is that correct? Yep, it's about like 6.09 a.m. <laughs> I was just going to ask because <laughs> if it was, according to my calculations, that would put you uh, awake at 6 a.m. So I'm super, neither Chez and I really don't know anything about you. Um, mm-hmm. And just the whole dynamic about trading, living on an island out in the middle of the, the Pacific Ocean where the time zone really comes into play. I am super fascinated and super interested to kind of learn Clay's actually super jealous as well that you're living the true uh, Wolf of Wall Street life. You know, you live, you bought the whole island of Hawaii. You're just kicking back <laughs> iPad trading on the beach. So, yeah, we're, we're fi- it's finally, you know, good that some th- some good came out of this uh, chat room and community, Clay. Good yeah, job. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all you have to do is you buy a subscription to the chat room and then you turn into Tony and you live in Hawaii. Um, and, yeah, you just live in the lifestyle. So now I was looking at your name and it looks like it's a Hawaiian type word, C-A-I. How do you oh, pronounce that? Um, that's actually Chinese. It's pronounced. Oh, well, I'm an idiot then, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> my apologies to Hawaiian people no and the Chinese culture. That's my, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> and we are not going to edit that out just to show that I'm a moron. So anyways, so <laughs> how do you pronounce that Chinese last name then? Um, I, I guess phonetically, it would be um, sort of like T-S-A-I. Uh, so like Thai. Thai. And that, okay. that part's kind of hard to say. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. and I, I don't, I'm not even going to try. Don't even try. I just, try, I don't expect people. The, the good thing is, the, the good, I mean, the positive here is, Chez, is that for the longtime listeners, people already know that I'm an idiot. So they're like, all right, whatever, Clay, just move on. But for the new people, they just learn that I'm not the smartest cookie in the, in the batch. So, uh, or the sharpest tool in the shed. Anyways, let's just get on with it. So we're talking to Tony in Hawaii. First off, Tony. Uh, thank you, because it is 6 a.m. where you live, and you're sitting here doing a, an interview with us, so I appreciate that. Um, and Tony has been a member for, actually, I don't know how long, because we barely know anything about Tony, which is awesome. But we were beforehand, we were talking about, and he said he's in the chat room observing and such, but uh, he isn't really participating. So that's why I say Ches and I don't really know anything about him, because it's not like we've talked with him in the chat room uh, at all. So this is going to be a, a fun journey, and literally all we know is that He's Tony from Hawaii. So, Tony, what got you interested in the markets in the first place? And then what kind of took it to the point where you wanted to get serious enough to, uh, you know, try to make something more of it? Well, I think it's a really um, interesting story. It kind of goes way back, um, really to like, to, like when I was younger, um, maybe around 2000, like the 2004, 2005 kind of time where um, I would be at home a lot, just kind of playing by myself or whatever because I was young. Um, probably like I was in uh, like elementary, middle, like middle school or something like that. And then uh, my parents would have CNBC on and my dad would probably be, you know, looking at stocks, trying to, trying to trade stocks or whatever. I didn't really know what he was doing. Um, but I think one day I peeked over his shoulder just to look at, um, just to look at one of the charts he was looking at. And then, you know, he was, he was looking at a line chart, but I mean, uh, I, I didn't know too much about charts back then. And then it was kind of interesting. I was looking at it and then I was kind of saying like, oh, hey, you know, like it, it kind of looks like it's going to do this. It's, it's going to it might go up. I think it might go up. And then my dad was just like telling me, oh, man, if you could predict this, you'd be a millionaire. So um, that was kind of like my first introduction to the markets. I wasn't too interested about um, like the whole CNBC thing because, well, like I couldn't understand what was, what was going on. And then fast forward to... Um, like uh, senior in high school, I was thinking about, uh, you know, college applications where I was going to apply to what kind of major I was going to. And um, like nothing really interested me besides business. And just to like go um, more into that, like fast forward now, I'm like a, um, like a super junior in uh, college because I'm doing a double major. But um, my primary focus is finance. And, you know, I've been looking into the markets more um, just about um, like six, seven months ago, I started looking online about um, you know how to make money, like you know in finance, what the career paths were, and then I came across this article. You know, this guy, he 
you know, he starts off with like ten thousand dollars, and then he 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 turns that into like two million. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of you know Tim Gratani. And then um, I came across that article, and I was just thinking like, wow, you know, like I want to be able to do that. But at the time, I didn't really have too much money, so I started saving. And then after I, you know, I work a restaurant job. After I saved a bunch of money, I pretty much just tried to jump into the stock market. See what okay. I could do. Let's circle back real quick because that is a, a super interesting story, and I can I can see how that would just always stick with you. Where if, you know your your dad makes a comment, oh yeah, if you can predict this stuff, you'll become a millionaire. And of course, <laughs> at the time, you're just like, all right, well, I don't have any. So it kind of, but I can totally see how that would just stick in the back of your mind, like, oh really, and just kind of always hold your interest. Did you ever pursue that anymore with your dad in terms of asking a little bit more about how it worked, or did you just kind of leave it at at, at that and then? you know, kind of just life continued to happen? Um, well, my dad doesn't really ha exactly have a good track record looking back and to ask him, like asking him about it. So um, like, I'm kind of, I'm always kind of like skeptical about listening to people who don't, don't seem like they're, you know, they know what they're talking about. Like people say I'm stubborn, but I'm really, you know, I'm really open to the right people. Like I'm very selective and, um, like recent, recently, he's been kind of like just looking at my trades, you know, just questioning my losses. And, you know, it's just it's kind of frustrating because he's not really understanding um, what I'm doing and uh, um, and about just he's like completely focused on the fundamentals. And he just he just and he's he's like a huge hindsight trader, not to like bash on him. No, no, no. <laughs> and, I, and I know exactly what you mean in the sense of, you know, um, old dogs, new tricks. That's what I like to kind of say. It. My dad was kind of the same way, and I actually think it's it's funny you mentioned that because you know you talked about his track record, and by no means are we bashing your dad by any means at all. But my dad had some had a trade or two similar where it just kind of dri dribbled down to nothing, and I kind of look back at him and I'm like, Dad, you know, you should have you should have been learning this stuff with me and all that stuff. But um, yeah, he's he's kind of in the same exact boat where he'll look at my stuff and be like, I don't. He gets what I'm doing, but he's like aren't you just gambling and that we'll go down a whole <laughs> hole with that, but we don't have to go down that route. But, um, so, so anyways, you know, you're very selective in who you want to learn from. You see this story and obviously it piques your interest because who doesn't want to turn $10,000 into $2 million. Um, and how that happens, you know, and the hard work and everything behind it is a, is a whole nother story. But, um, so, so you see all of this, you're in college now, you have some money saved up, is it safe to assume that, you know, as you go down the rabbit hole online that you are now going to focus on 5,000% winners that you pick early or something like that? Did this lead you to penny stocks? You know, where the, the internet, when you search for trading information, um, usually leads to a lot of kind of marketing nonsense. So I just want to see where you kind of ended up in your research. Well, um, initially, I kind of, you know, naturally, I would start with penny stocks because that's the easiest way for... Um, like people with not a lot of money to kind of get in the game. I mean, I didn't really know too much about options or anything. And, let, me, let me just you know. cut you off right there because that's super fascinating. <laughs> it's the easiest way to get involved in the game. Oh, says who? Where did where did you get this notion that penny stocks? Now I know the answer here, but for our listeners out there, I'm I'm assuming many of them may be in that same mindset where they're just under this impression that well, penny stocks are the easiest way. But what gave you that whole suggestion in the first place? Well, that kind of just started with um. When I was saving up too, I was thinking, okay, so if I save up, you know, two thousand, three thousand dollars, and I were to buy shares at Apple, I can't really buy that many shares. And you know, if I were to get into these penny stocks, they cost. Well, I'm not. I'm not talking about like sub dollar penny stocks because I'm. I'm rarely in um, those kind of penny stocks, but mostly like small biotech companies. Small cap. Um, yeah. You know, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Like one. Yeah. One dollar to maybe eight, eight to ten dollars max. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So you're, you're looking at the, the biotechs and before I cut you off, because, well, I got a smaller comp. That's what I have to start with. So did you have, I mean, really, I guess, what was your strategy at that, at that point in time? Was it internet? Was it social media? Where exactly were you generating kind of what you were learning and then where your trade ideas, you know, where exactly did that stuff come from? Um, well, Initially, since I seen that article, um, I um, I kind of wanted to be smart about it. I didn't want to just jump into the market right away, but I wanted I wanted 
you know, naturally I saw that article about, you know, Tim Gratani and that eventually, you know, a little more research online led to Tim Sykes. But I mean, just looking at the layout of Tim Sykes site at the moment, I was really skeptical. Like I didn't, I didn't trust this guy at all. I was like, oh man, this guy, I don't know, this guy must be a scammer. You know, like, yeah, he has so much pop up saying like, oh, become, you know, become my challenge student, blah, blah, blah. Not to bash on him or anything. So, um, and then I was looking at reviews online and it seemed like a lot of people liked Tim Gratani's video. So I went ahead and bought that to kind of start my education. And that's now for much just for context, I don't it says not I have no idea the answer to this because I didn't actually realize this was a thing. How much was that video or DVD or whatever it was? Because I didn't even know he had one, to be honest. OK, um, yeah. Uh, so it it's. I guess I, it could be a marketing um, tactic or whatever, um, but I think the retail price online is about eighteen hundred bucks. And then um, he he had a like a promotion going on where he had it like you know fifty percent off. You know, like a lot of, lot of I'm not Snapchat. <laughs> I'm I'm oh, I'm yeah. I'm picking it up from here before Clay. You know, its eyes burst out of his sockets here. But um, okay. So anyways, <laughs> uh, but you know, I want to commend you first off though. And, you know, I kind of glanced past it, um, but I didn't really mean to, is that you didn't want to kind of just jump in blindly. You at least wanted to find somebody that you personally thought, you know, who has a track record and has done well. And um, to you, and that's that's no problem at all. You thought it was worth it. And, and that's that's that. At least you invested in yourself. And that's what I really want to yes, kind of emphasize yes, for the listeners bravo. out there is that. That's such a rare thing to find generally, especially if people have, you know, very, very limited cash flow and just want to kind of roll their money. And then eventually the surgeon's dilemma, I'll link it in the show notes for you guys. Um, so you, so you get the DVD. Um, are you immediately, did you buy the Island of Honolulu and now you're just kicking back on your, your private Island or, you know, how did that go? Uh, no way. Um, I think, I think it's one thing to kind of watch the DVDs and learn the concepts. It's complete. It's a completely different, um, you know, thing to actually execute the trades and all the psychology and emotions that go through it. And um, not to not to give too much away um, about his DVD, but a lot of it is watching level two. And at the time, I, I didn't really understand what was going on too much. So I kind of fell asleep during those parts because it was just really long. And um, it didn't it, like looking back on it, it kind of seems more of a like an intermediate level type of um, education because I, I really like didn't really know s some of the terms that he was talking about and like what it actually meant in the market. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you you go through the the training and how much how how long was it? Just out of curiosity's sake. Um, the I think the total hours of the DVD it totals out to about 16 hours plus a few webinars so about like 20 hours ish i think gotcha okay so and you hey but hey you got it 50 percent off i'm sure it was a once i'm sure he only does it once a year <laughs> or something like that but all right but to echo ches's point you know what at least you're not one of these people that's like screw this stuff i'm gonna figure it all out on my own in the you know vast sea of the internet and i'm gonna go to you know learn to learn it on stock twits or something like that so um <laughs> i mean yeah that's We'll move on. So you still have a lot of things that you want to learn. So it, it sounds like you still had a lot of growing you needed to do. So, I mean, where exactly did you go from, you know, after the point where you invest in some education, you know, you go through it all, you fall asleep a little bit, uh, <laughs> you still have more to learn. So where did that, you know, quote unquote, more to learn? Where did you go next? Um, well, or did you start trading mate, or did you just put some money into the market at that point in time? Yeah. So I, I put a, um, a small amount of money into a Robinhood account. Well, this is before I actually watched the um, video. And then I was, um, well, actually, um, fast forward back, I did invest a little bit before I watched the video, but not in like penny stocks or anything, mainly like big names like Fitbit, a um, little cheaper stocks, um, Chegg, because I was using it at the time and I was kind of looking at the financial statements, looking like, oh, you know, I don't think this is properly priced. And then after I learned about trading, um, I jumped right in and, you know, kind of had a small position size, but just to see what I could do. And I probably could have not gotten in at a worst time. <laughs> Why do you say that? Um, so this is this is during um, May or June ish. And then um, like everyone who's 
been following penny stocks definitely knows MGT. And um, I caught it right at the top where before it cracked and then um, kind of lost a bunch of money there. So that was kind of okay. So I'm, I'm trying to is was this before you took the training course or after? This was during the training course. Okay, so you're you're putting money into the market as you're going as you're training then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good point there. You know, and I'll, I always like to tie it back to like brain surgery. When you are learning to become a brain surgeon, they're not like, hey, I, I realize you're in chemistry 101 right now, but here, come operate on this patient and snip a few <laughs> spinal cords or whatever. That's not how it works. You you first go through training, and then you get out there and practice it. But it's not like Tony's alone. Everybody does it. I did it. Uh, but it's just when you stop and think about it in a practical sense, it really doesn't make any sense. So let me ask this. If you had finished up the training, do you think you would have potentially avoided that? Or was it just uh, a total – I mean, because – I want to ask, well, where's your stop loss at? Why did you just get totally sure you bought the top, but did you not have any risk management in place at the time or what exactly happened? Um, definitely. I did have, I did have a stop loss, but uh, I just, you know, I kind of got greedy and I, so you, you know, didn't did have it. a stop loss. Okay. Yeah, yeah I did it. Well, I had, the I had illusion a, oh, of a stop loss. Yeah, there you go. Well said, Chaz. Mm. So how right. bad did oh. MGT actually get for you? Um, I think it was um, a, like about a 40, 40 cent loss before I kind of got out, and I was just like, "Oh man, like you know, this thing is this thing is breaking down." It was halting, and then it was just it kept breaking down. Now, now but what was this? Because okay, the listeners, forty cents may not sound like a lot if it was like Apple trading for a hundred bucks a share, but mm -hmm. how much was the uh, what was the share price per share when you bought? Um, not sure on the top of my head, but I believe like, it was around the four, four to fives range. Okay. So yeah, yeah, when you, for a stock that's trading right around $5 or below 40 cents is, is obviously a lot more percentage wise. So, um, you got kicked in the teeth. It sounds like that's fair to say. So was this a wake up call to you? Where did exactly did you kind of go from that point? Did you just decide, you know, I need to finish the training or are you just back out there again, throwing money at new trades? Um, definitely not the right approach to take, but it's kind of thinking of like, a, you know, in a revenge mode, like, dang, I got to make that money back now. And then kind of just try to look at other tickers and see what else is like, I, I looked at MGT and I was like, wow, you know, like this, this stock went up from like, you know, like a dollar all the way to $5. You know, if I can just find another stock like this, then I can like easily make 40 cents back. And down the rabbit hole you go. <laughs> yes. So now, now are we are we spending all our hard-earned money on scanners? Are we going to other chat rooms and we're going to be in twelve chat rooms at once? And you know what? What? How are you going to get that forty cents back? Because I was actually going to ask, did you revenge trade or anything like that? So while you may not have revenge traded MGT specifically, you're now looking to get back what the market has taken from you. So what? Um, what? What was the logic for this next part? I, I'm not. I don't even need to know specifically what you did next. I need to know what you wanted to do next. How are you going to find a way to get your money back? Um. Well, generally, just kind of. Um, well, at, at this point, I was kind of subscribed to. Uh, I eventually looked into it, and then I, I bought like Tim's Tim Sykes basic chat room service, and I was in there, and then I was just looking at some of the stuff that people were seeing. I was kind of like, you know, like the foolish and uh, foolish trader, or just kind of looking at other people's alerts, like, oh, they, 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 it seems like they know what they're talking about, and you know, MGT was bouncing. I tried to get back in. I'm like, okay, can I can catch a bounce up, like maybe 40 cents, at least I'll make my money back and then we'll kind of go from there. And how did it go from there? Were you making money? Were you losing more money? I mean, I, it sounds like this, I, at the point you were a total puppet. You just puppet trading <laughs> what everybody else said. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I was lucky enough to make back um, and actually um, take a little profit on MGT in the end. But I mean, it was not necessarily a good trade and i was kind of just being like a lot of people are just following alerts just seeing what other people are saying like oh this is spiking that's spiking you know kind of just look at everything like oh everything's spiking so is it fair to say that maybe there is some fool's gold here that had developed over the course of you know getting back some of these losses um that definitely okay so uh which many people can relate to myself included you oh yeah i'm, I'm making money therefore i know what i'm doing well 
that's not ne- that's not true at all because if you're making it through just randomness and no true strategy which of course to be fair at the time you don't you know you're not aware of that but uh uh that's just you know the epitome there of fool's gold so i mean at this point it sounds like to your own self admission you got it all figured out um i made back the losses from mgt and uh i, I yeah things are going well so did things continue to go well or where did things uh you know head from this track or from this point in the journey um well, I was watching his videos and then I was kind of studying along the way and kind of learned a little more, bit more about the charts and not just kind of get in anywhere, kind of about um, like support and resistance. But I mean, emotion still kind of played in a big factor and um, chasing was still a big thing where it would break out. And then I'm just like, oh, it just broke out. Like, you know, it could go at least, you know, this much more. And then I kind of got into those trades and it was, it, it was kind of decent trades. I mean, the risk reward wasn't the best, but eventually I kind of held too long, got too greedy, and then it kind of ended up crashing down on me. I love that Tony has gone through, it's not exactly my story, but I can completely relate to chasing things, getting excited for things, holding for too long, looking for too much. And it's a completely normal thing for most new traders to kind of go through and unfortunately a lot of people go through trial and error and usually blow up their accounts doing it um but at the same time it's a completely normal thing especially if you're kind of you know newer to the market and um you get hyped about things and breaking out and spiking and all this nonsense um eventually you know in the chat you know in a chat room is using the word spiking and stuff like that it's like all right spiking that's a total pump word right there something is yeah. spiking <laughs> a professional is gonna say something's got volume not it's spiking mm. give me a break yeah. that's a that's total Kool-Aid pumping words right there. And to Tony's credit, uh, even though he's buying breakouts and things like that, and you know sometimes he's holding too long, uh, he did recognize you know he wants to buy over a resistance level or buy near a support level. So he's starting to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. So um, your risk rewards off. Um, are you making money or losing money at this time now? Um, I was actually making uh, at that point. I was kind of making a, a decent amount on what I was doing. I was kind of I kind of disciplined myself a little bit, just thought about um, like taking taking profits a little quicker, um, just getting like cutting my losses quickly. But then um, I came across this uh, few trades that I got really stubborn, um, definitely broke my rules, was holding and, um, you know, hoping. And um, there's one trade that really, really um, I was just being stubborn about. Like it has to go down. It has to go down. It, that kind of um, that kind of blew up a big portion of my portfolio. And like, so you were on the short. That, so you were on the short side for some of these. I trades? was on the short. I was. So on you're the short shorting side. these micro cap stocks. Yeah. And it has to go down because it's a piece of trash and they're scams and it's just garbage. So it has to go down, right? Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah. Like I was in this ticker. Uh, Why did you think um, it had to go down? Why? Explain that to me. Um. Well. Just going from like fundamentals, I didn't think that the company like like I was just looking online. Everyone's like, "Oh, yeah, it's like negative cash flow. flow. This this company is terrible." And then when I was I was actually long before I was short. I, I kind of lost a little bit of money. I cut my losses, and I I was looking at it, and I was like, "Oh, okay. So you know, like there's like if it took a big spike like this, and there's no necessarily big news, then I mean, what what's to stop it from dropping back down to the point where, or at least." closer to where I, you know, bought it from or shorted it from for that matter. So you were just basically, everybody was for the listeners real quick. If you're new shorting just means, uh, Tony wants to make, he wants the price to go down. Cause when you're on the short side of a trade, you make money from falling prices. So everybody was saying that this is a piece of crap company and that it's going to go down. And to be fair, most of them do go down, right, Tony? I mean, most piece of crap yeah. companies are going to go down, right? And that was that was working out for me like a lot of the time. So I was kind of getting stubborn about it. Exactly. And I was a like, lot oh. Of exa- oh, Tony, and people are going to think this is scripted, but I promise it's not. A lot of the time, <laughs> yes. A lot of the times the whole, oh, well, short these penny stocks, short these micro cap stocks because they're all trash. They're all garbage. They're all manipulated. So they'll go down. True. Most of the times mm-hmm. they go down until the one or two times where they don't. And it sounds like, Tony, you're in one of these situations where it actually didn't happen. So how bad did it actually get for you? Where did you short at? Do you remember the price? Um, yeah. So let, uh, let me just kind of like sidetrack and talk a little um, like a, 
like kind of something related to that. I was watching a show called Billions, which is about a hedge fund manager. Oh yeah, yeah, on like, Showtime. Yeah, my wife and I yeah. watched season one. Yep. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so you know, like B- Bobby Axelrod, he's you know he's getting short squeezed, and he's like, no, everyone just. You know, we got this. We got this. I'm Bobby Axelrod. You know, it's gonna go down. Just we're getting squeezed. It's okay. So then I'm I'm just thinking, okay, you know, I'm just getting squeezed. And you know, just for reference for um like the listeners, uh, the ticker was R E N Ren. Oh and, my goodness, that thing uh, was yeah. a beast. Woo! You got you got squeezed <laughs> all right, like a big yeah, old pimple. Yeah. So I saw I was I was long at um seven like around seven something before and. It dropped down to like six. I thought it was gonna go up, but then it kind of just dropped to the six. His volume was fading. I got out, and then like one day I saw, you know, this thing. You know, within a couple of days, it got up to like, um, like around thirteen, fourteen dollars. And at that point, I'm like, oh man, this thing is way overbought. This thing is way too high. There's, you know, there's. I mean, if I, if I get squeezed, it's it's for like a couple of days or a week tops. Like this thing is gonna go back down for sure. You know what? You know what? I gotta. I gotta just rant here because this is what I. I'm not ranting at Tony. I'm ranting at the whole marketing pitch and sales pitch and strategy pitch of hey, these micro caps are garbage. They're gonna go down. Um, so you know, just th- just short them. Listen to what his risk management is. Is I'm gonna get short. I'm gonna get squeezed for maybe a day, maybe a week at most. Meaning I have no risk control. I'm gonna have to sit there through pain. I'm gonna have to look at red P and L and just say, you know what? I'm getting squeezed right now. I'm getting squeezed right now. It's fine. I realize that I'm looking at losses right now, and I I, I don't know when a loss becomes enough of a loss, but I, I know I'm going to get squeezed, and I knew I was going to get squeezed going in, so I'm just sitting through the quote-unquote pain right now. It, that's not risk management. That's just you're hoping. You're holding and hoping that, yeah, it is just a squeeze, and then it's eventually going to roll back over. And again, to be fair, yeah, many of the times it is going to roll back over, and you will be fine. But the one or two times where – you're not just getting squeezed and it actually continues on up. See you later. All those other times where it, it just happened to work. So, I mean, that's just the worst. If that is your risk management, is that your trading strategy as well? I may, I may have to sit through like a couple of days of pain, maybe a week's worth of pain at most before it goes back over. That's in other words, you're saying I am holding and hoping that I don't have my account get blown up. Chez, would you agree with me there? I'm, I mean, I don't know. I can't think clearly right now. The adrenaline's just surging through my brain. So I don't yeah. know. If I, I might speak in English right now. I might have transitioned to another language. I don't even know it. Yeah. Do you have so any thoughts I'm, on this, Chess? Because the adrenaline's come on, Chess. I'm, I'm going to take it away from you before you <laughs> smash your computer screens up for something. Because oh, that's that the trade, worst strategy I've ever. And I, Tony, I'm not blaming Tony because I understand mm-hmm. where this thought process is coming from. But goodness. And, and, you know, just like you said, you know, it pretty much is holding and hoping and it only takes that one ticker that doesn't do it. And for context, you know, when Tony is looking at trading this, it's between, you know, eight and, you know, 575. Okay. So he takes some heat. It goes up to 10, 12, 14, 16, pulls back a dollar. That is currently trading. Ren is now trading at $30 and he was short from like $6. Okay. For context here. 13, 13, 13. 13. Okay. And it's still... (laughs) looking fine it's not it is not completely crash and these are the trades and we've had it unfortunately there's people who've been stubborn and kind of you know holding because it has to go down in our chat room you know it's not our chat room isn't this perfect place where you know everybody always wins all the time there are people in it who are, are we're trying to use the strategy and have literally blown up their accounts um just with different tickers so and i want to and i want to also sorry but i want to be fair to tony yeah, I, Tony, I fully agree. Looking back here at the chart at $13, that made good sense. It, the, the chart was ridiculously overextended. It made total, total sense for you to do what you did. But this whole mindset of, oh, you know, I'm not, I won't go there anymore. But holding and hoping, that's what this whole, tran- you know, that's what this strategy ultimately translates to is, well, you might have to sit through some pain. What does that mean? No, establish <laughs> where your pain ends. Sitting through pain, that's just a generalization. That's just, we got to move on, Chess. I'm going to absolutely. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm going to lose. <laughs> so, but to be fair, Tony, you got it in and short at 13. Looking at the chart makes perfect, perfect sense. It was not illogical at all. So walk us through there. You're holding and hoping I'm just getting squeezed. So, I mean, pick it up from there before I cut you off like 20 minutes ago. But anyways, go for it. So I'm getting squeezed. I'm getting squeezed. Um, I'm getting, getting squeezed. squeezed. Put some numbers to that. Like 17, 17, okay. 18. And okay. Then, so um, you're short at 13, 17 bucks, 18 bucks. Keep on going. 
then I talked to one of my friends who uh, he actually has his own hedge fund and I asked him, can you can you look at the fundamentals of this company? Can you tell me why this is happening? Like this, like, is it going to go down? You know, something I wouldn't recommend anyone doing, you know, getting in a trade with like asking other people for advice. But, um, you know, back then I didn't, I didn't know better. Amen. And then, yeah. And then he, he told me, he told me, oh, yeah. He said, oh, you know, this is in the Persian. He is because he's. He he focuses on like the oil gas industry, so he was like, "Dude, you should, um, you should you should get out." And then uh, and he's like, "I'm surprised you're still holding." And then I was just like, "Okay, okay." So at this point, I mean, I'm still kind of guilty of this a little bit. I was thinking, "Okay, so I'm gonna get out, but I'm gonna wait for it to kind of pull back a little bit, and then I'm not gonna take as much of a loss." And then you know we're we're gonna get out fine. And then it, eventually, um, you know, I kind of got squeezed up all the way to like. I think I got out around in the 19s. You know, it was it was really bad. So, I mean, just again, so, some context. You got short at 13, and then at 17, you know, even at 17, that's still four dollars per share against you. Four dollars per share, and this is not like it's a 800 dollars stock where four dollars is like, all right, whatever. That's like not even a percent. This is on a sub 20 dollars stock. And it's gone four dollars against you. And at this point, you're still in the mindset of, well, I just got to sit through some pain. I just got to sit through some pain. It's already four dollars against you. Again, I'm not blaming Tony. I'm blaming this mindset out there that has marketed this quote unquote trading strategy that sounds great. It is a beautiful sales pitch, but in practicality, it just and this is why because all it takes is one of these runs or uh, you know a, a KBIO or. Uh, uh, just th- I, I can list them off and off, but um, so you finally get out at 18. Actually, good job because to give me <laughs> credit, if you uh, kind of spilled the beans on this, which is fine, but it is now trading basically at $30 at the time of this recording. So, I mean, could you imagine if you still want to be Bob, Bob, Bobby Axelrod? And, I'm just getting squeezed. I'm just, getting, yeah, you're still getting squeezed. All right. And it would be up to $30. So at least, uh, you know, you got out of there at, at that point in time. But, uh, and yeah, like Chess said, the thing is still, and a nice overall uptrend. So it's not like this thing has crashed at all and it hasn't even had any nasty days. So, um, but anyways, wow, Tony. Tony never thought you that. You let us down the rabbit hole. You didn't yeah. even realize it, Tony. But yes, we. Uh, <laughs> you, you brought up the rant topic. And like Clay said, we're not yelling at you. We just get very passionate about this BS marketing where, you know, forget putting in a bunch of effort and doing anything that's hard work and spending your time. Just short everything because it's all crap and that's just not how the market works. Short it when it gets overextended because they're crappy companies. And yeah, works out probably 90% of the time until the 10% but, happens. But that one. Yeah, but until that 10% one. that happens and wipes out everything out. So you get squeezed here. You realize you're, well, hopefully you realize you're not Bobby Axelrod. Where do you go from this <laughs> point in your journey? Um. Well, just to um, kind of like, Sorry, I kind of go off topic. But, no, that's um, fine. Just, this is this is your show. We're just here for. We'll talk about whatever. We're just in a coffee shop right now, so talk about whatever. That's totally cool. On the reverse side of you know, kind of hoping that it will go down, there are definitely stocks that I have thought that definitely will go to the moon. And at one point before, when I was kind of a little more uh, or less educated, I was on stock twits. Oh no! And then I was looking at people, what people were saying, and then. You know, I was in another. I just really want to talk this about this ticker because this is one of like the most memorable ones. Jivo. Oh you know, yes, Jivo, and, Jivo another yeah. classic, classic. Yeah. So they announced, you know, they had this renewable fuel that you know it it's making a deal with Alaska Air. They're flying out. So I was like, okay, you know, once the news comes out that you know that they successfully landed, then you know the stock has to go up at least a little bit. You know, it was trading at like I got in at like a dollar twenty. You know, it cracked down to like dollar ten. I was like, it did crack my you know, um, my support and my risk level, but everybody on stock Twitch says those are the just weak hands. It's going to the moon. <laughs> it's, it's, part, <laughs> it's going to the, like, I was thinking like, I, I probably can go at least to a dollar fifty, dollar sixty. I'd probably get out then. And then it, that thing just completely tanked like the next day to like 70 cents. And now it's like, I think it's like 40 cents or something like that. So yeah, it went from, it went from 140 to the next day down to like 70 cents and now it's at 40 cents. So just completely crumbled, like you said. Mm-hmm. So that was another big kick in the face then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just, um, uh, so, man. <laughs> wait, back to what you were um, asking. Sorry, I totally forgot the question. What was I asked? Chaz, what was I asking? I don't remember what I was asking. Oh yeah. So after, uh, the, um, uh, 
after REN the kicks trade. In the face. Yeah, after, yeah, yeah. REN trade. You 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 hopefully realize you're no longer Bobby Axelrod. So where did exactly did you go off from here? That let me ask this: At what point did you stumble across our chat room, the inner circle? Um, I think after a while, I was just kind of browsing online about um just general videos because um like you know Tim Sykes is great and all, but like I. I frankly don't think he explains um, like concepts as well as other people do. Um, and when I was starting, I had to look up other videos on like level like level two just to kind of understand like the um, like the concepts behind like you know like the supply and demand of level two, not just you know looking at it and saying oh you know it's reversing or you know there's a wall of sellers. They didn't really know what that meant. You know I think I had to be kind of clear on you know for like newbies pretty much so to be fair or and just because i don't want to the the training that you had invested invested into they didn't quite they assumed that you knew a lot of stuff already is that a safe i mean is that a kind of a how it how it all unfolded for you they just assumed more than what you actually knew um yeah like i'm guessing maybe a lot of these people just have been there for a while and have been watching his daily lessons. I mean, I'm not, I can't go back his library and watch like all 3000 video lessons, you know, cause that would take forever. And then, um, at the same time, maybe some people bought his DVDs. I'm not, I'm not too quite sure, uh, but, uh, there's definitely terms people were throwing around where I just didn't really understand what it meant. And it, yeah, it was kind of hard to like get through yeah, that. No, I, that makes sense. Cause I get this once in a while is, you know, I feel like, and they're talking to me, you know, I already know this stuff. Well, it's like, that's cool that you know it. But I mean, when I put stuff together, I assume that you're a moron and that you don't know anything at all. So I start at the, the basics of basics and then build from there. And yeah, that rubs some people the wrong way because from their perspective, well, I already know how all that stuff works. But from other people, and it sounds like in your case, uh, you know, if, if everything had started at the very beginning, because like you said, you wanted to, you just needed to know a little bit more about kind of the background on how all that worked. And um, it's not a good sign when, you invest into something and then you find yourself searching for free information because you still don't have questions answered. I mean, uh, did you try to email these people and ask that you purchase these courses from or, or, or did you never even uh, attempt to reach out to them? Um, I actually have never, um, I never emailed Tim Gritani at any point, but, um, I was in the chat room, I was asking questions and then, um, people, um, people kind of just gave the generic response. You need to study more, but I didn't really know exactly what, to study to give me a link for the video library and I'm like okay you know like can you can you guys just tell me a like a straight answer point me in the right direction like you need to study level two you need to study you know price action like you know I didn't know I was like okay I need to study I you know I've been studying like what do you want well, me yeah. to study? And, and the thing with this you need to study level two well okay you need to go study brain surgery to become a surgeon what does that mean <laughs> that's such a broad topic you need to go study price action yeah, but what about price action? I, it needs to be organized in a way that I can actually understand price action. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I totally understand we were kind of flapping out in the wind there because, yeah, with, without a whole lot of uh, structure that starts at the very beginning, things can get a little, things can get messy in a hurry. But so anyways, you are searching for videos and I'm assuming at some point in time you stumble across one of the YouTube videos of mine or where exactly, how do we? How did you find yourself eventually into the inner circle? Because looking at the time, uh, we got to start to wrap things up here, but, uh, you know, inner circle, what, where did that eventually factor into this journey here? Yeah. So I was just looking at, um, videos online about, um, just trading psychology, other things that I could do to kind of be more profitable, came across your videos where you analyzed, um, a couple of tickers that I was actually looking at and playing. So, um, seeing this guy, Clay Trader. Okay. I listen to his videos, watch his videos. And then, um, you're analyzing these charts and it's, it's very unbiased and you're just talking about, um, you know, the support is here, the resistance is here, and you're looking at a chart to kind of tell you the story of what's going on. And I thought that was really intuitive and that kind of opened my eyes and really helped me understand the the basic concepts of how the chart actually tells the story. And I think it was at that point where I, um, I was looking at everything. I was like, oh, okay, it kind of makes more sense now. It's amazing how a little bit of basics can go a long way. I mean, and so you... The, were, was it just the, the the video charts that you're watching that helped to explain this, or were you watching like any of the live trade videos? Uh, or I mean, what 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 exact videos? Let me ask this: What ticker symbols? Because I'm curious if I if I remember uh, the ticker um, symbols that you had watched. If not, no, not a big deal. I'm just. Um, 
I think I think it was um, like like I think you did one on CRBP. I'm not I'm not hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. CRBP. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I was definitely in that. Um, and then I think um, like I don't know, like AMRX or something like that. Okay, maybe like AMRS or yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, regardless. something like that. Yeah. So, what ultimately made you decide to, to pull the trigger on the the inner circle? You just thought you'd give it a, give it a try then, or I mean, what was your kind of thought process behind that? I mean, I was I was listening to I found your podcasts and I was listening to some of the podcasts and you know I wanted to see what other people thought of you know your your training and the inner circle and everything and definitely the pricing is you know an attractive factor but I was still in. I'm still subscribed to Tim's chat room, so I was kind of wondering, like, oh, should you know, is it worth it to jump in this chat room as well, like, take on this extra education? So I started listening to your podcast, and um, I was thinking, okay, this guy's really into options, you know. Um, yeah, I, I thought that you're pretty like, um, you know, you didn't really favor penny stocks too much, and you rather, um, you know, you kind of promoted that options were the way to go. And um, I was kind of looking into that a little bit, but then um, like the resources online are kind of confusing. So um, I thought, you know, it wouldn't hurt to add another, you know, tool to my toolbox. And, you know, I could probably learn something about penny stocks as well as options. So that kind of uh, made me think about joining the, um, the inner circle and ultimately CTU. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So as it stands right now, as you sit in Hawaii, I'm so jealous of you. What are you actually trading? Are you not trading? Are you studying? What are you focused on? Kind of update us where you are at present time right now. Um, well, definitely one of the challenges in living in Hawaii is that um, the market's open at 3.30 a.m. for us. So my sleeping schedule is completely thrown off. Um, yeah, like I sleep at like, I'm a grandpa. I sleep at like 7 o'clock. I wake up at 3, you know, do a little like pre-market, you know, analysis jump into the markets. Sometimes I'll go back to sleep at five. Sometimes if there's too much like going on where I'm just kind of like watching the charts or studying, I'm, I'm, I just stay up, you know, do my homework, go to school and then just rinse and repeat from there. That, uh, what do you think about that? See, Chez kind of has it miserable because he's in California. So he's in Western or, uh, Pacific time zone. But I mean, Chez, this is, this is craziness. This 3 30 in the morning. This is a whole new up. level of, yeah, I, <laughs> I always say, you know, I, I love during the, the seasons of the year where the sun is actually up when I wake up in the wintertime. It's absolutely miserable at, you know, six o'clock. But, you know, Tony here, Tony's never seen the sun when the market comes up, no matter what, <laughs> what season of the year it is. So, I mean, that's, that's just true dedication. But, um, but, yeah, there's a lot of it's 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 uh that's good, man. That's some uh, some dedication right there. And I, I totally love the fact that you're like total grandpa mode seven o'clock i'm already tucked into bed and like i'm getting up really early so yeah i mean no, yeah all power to you my friend you you gotta be so i mean right now are you mainly when you say study that is i'm assuming that's going through the clay trading university courses and stuff like that is that where kind of your main focus is at this point yeah correct <laughs> what uh out of here what course are you on right now just um well i mean um i kind of just wanted to re like it wouldn't hurt to um refresh on the basics so um i started with robotic um training and i'm going through that right now nice kind of just yeah and then uh, so I so, kinda, so far so good yeah um i'm kind of like a little impatient so i kind of um like while i was studying i kind of skipped around to um like robotic training sharpening and i'm like okay it's like what is this about and then you know i saw the homework i was like okay all right um you know maybe i'll do that after maybe i'll finish up the first video and then watch this video and i kind of jumped around um like because I had a, um, I was in the TD Ameritrade uh, trading challenge, so I was like, okay, I got to get options down in like two weeks. So I have to, I have to watch options made easy and um, advanced options like right now. Just skip through this and kind of get going with that. Can I offer you some constructive criticism? Okay. Your ambition is going to hurt you in the long run. <laughs> you are way too ambitious. You need to just take a breath. How old are you? Twenty one. Twenty. I'm twenty one. You're 21. I assure you that the markets are going nowhere. And if they go somewhere, then that all means we're like working for some other country or something. I don't know. So it's, you got the ambition part down. Fantastic. But it's like, there's always trade-offs and here the trade-off for you is, and Chez, you can chime in if I'm, if you disagree, but you're trying to go way too fast because you're an ambitious guy. You're a hardworking guy, but slow down. You got so much 21. You said 
21. Crap, man. So you, when you got, yeah. So, I mean, you're still like a year ahead of when I even got in the market. So you got plenty of time. Slow down, right? Chez, is that kind of the yeah. easiest way to and summarize? I was going to say you're, you're three or four years ahead of your, you know, well before I even glanced at the market. So, and, and Tony, I was like you in the same way. Like, that's why I'm saying I love this. This podcast is so great because when I got access to CTU, I blasted through the courses. Like Clay was like, how did you finish everything <laughs> yeah. already? And I was like, I'm literally watching like eight hours of course material or more every day, like at all hours and all that stuff. And the thing is, is that when you go really fast through it, while you may understand the concepts, you're not, your brain isn't absorbing it as best as it could. And, you know, really, and I always emphasize this, especially when I'm on, uh, you know, consultation calls with people who are interested in the program is that, you know, while you're going through the courses, you want to kind of practice it with, you know, regular charts. You know, there's a lot of free charting providers, you know, tradingview.com is a great one and just practice while you're going through it. And this is almost like any other sport, you know, if you want to get good at free throws in basketball, you're gonna have to do a bunch of free throws, you know, after somebody teaches you the correct form and stuff like that. So I kind of always tell people to do the same thing. But um, yeah, your ambition is kind of it's a double edged sword in the sense of you're going to try to get to where you're going quicker. Um, but at the same time, you're going to those little shortcuts and those little nuances that you miss are going to be costly. But otherwise, you know, obviously you have a passion for the market um, that can't be argued. But yeah, it, I definitely agree with Clay. Um you got time. Just just go through it. Just kind of process it. Take notes on it. Apply it here and there. Practice it, and um, everything just slowly kind of falls into place. But yeah, I was I was with you there when I was just digesting all the content the first time, and that's why I had to go through it multiple times. And life is just such a cruel joke because most people I want to wring their neck because they want the the easy way. They want the you know they just they don't they don't want to work hard for anything. And here Tony you want is. The soft picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here Tony <laughs> is. He's so ambitious, but now his ambition is causing him to skip around and go here and go here. And I, I just slow down. So you, you're a smart guy. What you're d- doing a double major for crying out loud? What is your double major in? Uh, accounting and finance. Okay, so there you go. You're a, clearly <laughs> a smart guy. You're only 21. Slow down. You, I, I <laughs> promise you, if you go just. Video by video, course by course, even if you know it, there might be some little piece that, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. And it, it'll come together much better than skipping around and rushing because you have some TD Ameritrade thing in two weeks that you got to figure out. You know, I got to learn options in two weeks. Boom. That's not a good learning strategy. Just I'm going to learn options at my pace. And, you know, I, will the TD Ameritrade challenge, will that be around next year? Um, yes. Actually, so it's, uh, there you go. <laughs> you miss it in two weeks. Hey, you're only 21. That means you can do it when you're at age 22 and still in college. Well, actually, so it's actually um, it's actually three weeks in. It's like um, like in a week <laughs> it'll be over. But I just I just really wanted to like win I can, and I can you tell. Know, get, I can I can hear you on the rate. Your and ambition is very in your face, which is a good thing. But also there there's always a trade off. So um, but yeah, that's and like I said, take it. That's just my observation looking in. I mean, I, you do whatever you want. You're, it's your life. It's your money. So, but just from experience, from helping many others, dude, man, you're in such a good spot. Just, uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of the Hawaiian word, but then I just realized I only know, what am I? Don't, I don't two try words, that. I only know two words in Hawaiian anyways, aloha and mahalo. But so why <laughs> I thought I knew slow down and it doesn't matter. Tony, <laughs> he's like a magician. He keeps getting my, he's a puppet master. He's like pulling my strings. Yeah. He knows exactly what to say. So, but we gotta, we gotta start, we gotta wrap this up. This is all right, all right. time has flied, flown, time has flown by, I think. But uh, anyway, so Chez has, ooh, Chez, you better get out your wallet. Shipping your time machine out to Hawaii is going to be this costly. It's going to be costly. I'm right. I'm going to have to write this one off to the company. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, there we oh, go. Can I so, just add one last thing before? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, Tony. Yeah. Go for just, it. Um, so definitely, I think. Um, jumping into the um, options thing, going to the TD Ameritrade Challenge. Um, it was good because it's paper money, so I don't really lose out. And it was a valuable lesson in the end because I missed because I you know went through it so fast. You know, your advice is totally correct. I went through it too fast. I missed some key points and I blew up about seventy percent of my um, ding, trading. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, wait, so this, <laughs> this option challenge already happened? Well, yeah, initially it was like I was making a lot of money and I was like, wow, that's like, I don't even see the risk here. I just hold it for a little bit. Apple's going to go up like dollar, you know, I'm going to make some money easy. And then like um, I kind of missed out on the t- um, on the theta, um, on the time decay thing. Like I, I totally <laughs> forgot <laughs> about of, it. And that's then, kind of an important part I, to it, Tony. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then, you know, I was thinking about your, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but like how you calculate uh, how much you can make per dollar and everything in your options 
made easy video and I was like, okay, you know, I got this. And then the options were expiring that week and you know, they just all expired worthless. Cooked, you know, that cooked. Was, That's yeah, funny. Uh, I didn't know. I thought, I thought we were, this was like future tense. Like this was something coming up for you. I didn't know that you had already been experiencing this. So yeah, as you just confirmed, you rushed through things and you blew up your account. So, but so yeah, thank you for sharing that because that's, uh, <laughs> that's perfect. But uh, anyways, do you want to share anything else just because I mean, this, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself here, even though you're a puppet master and pulling my strings, but <laughs> no, that, I just wanted to, you know, kind of throw that out there for any listeners who just nope. want to, you know, learn options and think it's super easy, you know, just watch options made easy, you know, just bought that DVD and be like, okay, we got this, you know, there is definitely more to it, to it than that for sure. And that, that's why the options trading simplified course is a course individually. Yes, but it's within an, uh, an entire program, otherwise known as Claytrain University, but I'll just leave it at that. So Tony, like I said, Chez has a time machine. He's shipping it out to you uh, in Hawaii. And if you could give, if you could go back to the start and give yourself one bit of advice, what would that bit of advice be? Um, definitely just risk management. No, no hoping, no kind of um, changing, changing my stop loss. A uh, few more cents down, a few more cents down. You know, just, you know, get out. Um, don't, don't like, it doesn't matter what happens after. Cause you, in hindsight, you really didn't know if it was going to go up or down. You just need the indicators, you know, pointed in the opposite direction. Clay is literally crying over there. Whenever yeah, anybody so says that the most important thing or what piece of advice to give themselves is it has the word risk in it. And it's not in the context <laughs> of risk everything. It's control your <laughs> risk. Man, and he's, learn a how to master. he's just over here. Now he's got me crying. I was yeah. yelling, now I'm weeping tears. He's a puppet master. And it's that's he's completely true. We have no idea what's going to happen the next day, next hour, next minute. But the only thing we control as traders is our risk. So uh, totally awesome to have you, Tony. It's been a pleasure having you on today. But uh, the, the real question that's going to determine whether or not this podcast airs is, what's your favorite movie? Um, I would say it's in between Limitless or The Big Short. Both good movies. Both limitless. That's one with uh, Bradley Cooper, right? Yeah, kind of, kind of explains how I'm just like I just want to go out there and that, you know, it get makes, it. It makes <laughs> sense, man. You're quite the ambitious. I already know what that. Yeah, ambition will be in the uh, in the title of this podcast for sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, what about food? What do you like to eat out there in Hawaii? Um, there's a lot of good food. Um, a lot of Japanese influence. So uh, I like eating sashimi and um, definitely um, just a go-to food, just steak. I can eat steak every day. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with steak. Now, we've asked people before what's a place they like to visit, and a lot of sometimes people will say they like to visit Hawaii. So considering you're in Hawaii, what is a place that you would actually like to visit? Yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is good stuff here. Uh, Australia and Canada. Oh, our Canadian members are good. He, you know what he's doing, Chess? He's now puppet mastering all our Canadians. I mean, you think <laughs> he's guys. taking over the podcast, taking yeah. over the community, one country at a time. This, yeah, is this, <laughs> this guy is the master. Uh, he's Tony. I know what you're up to. Okay. I just want you to know that I'm well aware of all this string pulling you're doing here. Uh, can, have you ever been to like the mainland? As I know you call it out in Hawaii. Have you ever been here before? Uh, I've been to, uh, like an eight day East coast tour. And I have been to the West coast just recently and okay. Vegas as well. Okay. So you have been, cause I know so you didn't, you didn't stop by Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. Well, what's no. up with that? No. <laughs> I, it, I guess I'm just a, an, an ignor, ignoramus, but uh, my wife and I, we've, uh, we've gone to Maui a couple of times and I don't know why, but I just assume like for them, it's like, Oh Yeah. I've never been to the mainland before. It's like, oh, wow, you're like an American citizen. That's great. But you've actually <laughs> never really been to like, you know what I'm getting at, Chez? Like the, the main continental, the right. It's, it's, continental. Like, it's almost yeah. like their view to here is how our view is to there. You know, you're, you're still totally part of the country. We're not saying that. It's just, you know, we got a lot of miles of travel to kind of get there. So um, it's definitely kind of more of like an exotic trip than it is just, you know, driving across state lines or something. Really different, really different. Tony, are you a fan of shaved ice? Um, it's, it's all right. Honestly, it's, I'm not, I'm not, um, sugar and water guy. clay. Where are you going with this? <laughs> I, that's like the greatest thing in Hawaii is the shaved ice. I mean, that stuff is so good there. And, but I guess, I mean, you live there, so it's probably the law of diminishing returns. It's not, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but, uh, we got it. What do you like to do for fun or hobbies besides 
Um, Trade, sleep, and st study with your double major. I mean, do you have time <laughs> for anything else? Um, well, I'm like on the leadership board in my club, and that's killing me this semester. Um, and now and you're on the leadership board? Goodness. <laughs> I am ambitious. Ambitious. I, ambitious. I am. I am um, what I like. To, I like weightlifting, and I like listening to music. There you go. And um, obviously weightlifting, I'm sure, especially with all the stress and everything you're doing is definitely beneficial. We're all we're all about kind of physical fitness. And, um, you know, especially if people who are trading full time too. you know, you just sit in front of a desk the whole time. It's just going to destroy your health. So um, totally awesome. And music is a good way also just to kind of keep your mind straight. So um, like I said already, Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure. You've literally puppeted and taken over just about half the community, <laughs> one country at a time. Play is still wiping the tears off his he cheek from our discussions I of risk. He owns me. There's, he's yeah. mentally is my puppet master. That's all I'll say. But um, <laughs> what would you say are three words you believe should be associated with successful trading? Um, discipline, um, patience, and um, it's not one word, but like um, kind of sticking to the charts. I like that. I like that. Stick to the charts. That's that'll work. Um, and yeah, three simple concepts there, but uh, there there's a lot that goes into them. But uh, man, Tony, whew, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, no worries. Would you ever come back if we invited you back? Yeah, for sure. Kind of update you guys on what you know I've learned in CTU. Excellent. Now, what I, what what island are you on though, real quick? I am on Oahu. Is that the one with Honolulu on it? Yes. Okay. So if I ever come to Honolulu, you, can we hang out, go get lunch or something? Uh, I will show you the best places to eat. Uh, that, <laughs> I sh I'm, I'm about to call my wife in here right now and tell her, hey, <laughs> buying plane tickets, we're going to have a personal tour guide. So I would totally hang out with you, Tony. You are one cool dude. And uh, again, thank you for uh, spending some, I was going to say spending the afternoon with us, but for you, it's the early. So morning, thank you for spending morning. your early morning with us. For those of you out there listening, a few final things before we all part ways until next week. First, if you're listening on the website itself, leave us a comment, click that share button. That really helps out. We do read comments and we will reply to them. If you're listening on iTunes or any of the other podcast players, subscribe so you can keep up to date on when new episodes are released. And especially on iTunes, if you could take some time to leave us an actual rating there, hopefully a five-star rating, then that really does go a long way in helping us out and it's totally a free way to help us out, and we really do appreciate that. Finally, if you're listening on YouTube, check out the rest of the channel. There's live trade videos. There's quick tip videos, all sorts of other things out there uh, that uh, you know may be able to help you out. So hopefully you can check that out and then ultimately decide to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for listening. We'll see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.